Hi, welcome back. So in this video, we will be deriving the equation about conservation of momentum. So the equation again, you may want to put it down first. That is this one, mu plus mu, mv plus mv, 1, 1, 2, 2, 1, 1, 2, 2 here. Okay, so I recommend you to get a uh, paper that we can work on this together. And so let me give you some hints because you probably have no idea how we should start with. Think about this. When we try to use this equation, it all involves uh, the fact that when there are two objects, they collide to each other. So think about when two blocks, let's say this one, and there's another one, M1, M2, when they collide, there must be a impact force between them. So think about that force and that may help you to start the basic idea. So you have to base on certain physics concept that you have learned earlier and then lead to this equation at the end. I don't want to give you too many hints because deriving formula is the most interesting thing in physics. It's like the core spirit of studying physics. So I don't want to spoil your fun, okay? And so for now, uh, you may want to start off with this scenario and think about what you should be based on and how you can derive that equation. If you want more hints, you can you can try and if you really don't know how, I'll give you one more hint later on. So pause the video now first. A few moments later. Okay, so here is a hint if you still cannot do it. Think about when they collide, they again, as I said, there is a force. And whenever we talk about force, uh, recall what you have learned uh, previously, we talk about Newton's third law. Okay, and Newton's third law told you that whenever there is a force, there must be an of another force that is adding on the other object. So let's say uh, the, the force that you see is A adding on B, then there is a, another force that is B adding on A. And they are of the same magnitude and opposite direction. This is what Newton's third law told you. And so in this case, what we can do is we can say, let's say this one is uh, F, this is a force adding on two. So let's say it's F2. And there's also a force that is adding on M1. Let's say call it F1. Okay, so this is a hint that I can give you. So if you still want to try, pause the video and try yourself. Okay, so I'm going to do the rest now. Feel free to pause anytime if you find, oh, I really want to do that, okay? So the first thing that you should start with, based on what we talk about Newton's third law, then obviously we can say F1 equals to F2 in magnitude, but they are in the opposite direction. So I have to put negative on one of them. Either one of them is fine, right? Doesn't really matter. And so in this case, you can then recall, okay, by the way, maybe you can say this is by Newton's third law. Newton's third law. And then the next step is, since this is the only force, remember there's no friction horizontally, and so this impact force is the only force, then we can say F equals to MA. So earlier it was Newton's third law, now it's Newton's second law, which is F equals to MA. So uh, this F will become MA11. This F2 will also become MA22. Don't forget the negative. All right, next up then, you have to recall the definition of acceleration that we have learned earlier. And that's A equals to V minus U over t okay the t is like the change of time right in our case it will be the impact time how much time they are in contact of course it will be very short it's very instantaneous but there's still a finite time right maybe 0 0.001 second i don't know and then v and u you know is final and initial velocity so in this case we will change it to uh, keep the m and then we will have v1 minus u1 over T1. Similarly, on the right hand side, V2 minus U2 over T2. 
And you may think, oh, it, it looks complicated and seems like deviate from what we are trying to derive, but not really. Okay. In fact, you should realize that T1 and T2 should be the same. Because think about, there's no way that M1 will be touching M2 while M2 is not touching M1, right? Like, if, if think about if I slam you in the face, then my hand and your face must be touching each other with the same amount of time, right? There's no way your face touching my hand more than my hand touching your face. I mean, I mean this is two ways, right? So, yeah, T1 and T2 will be the same. And if you're okay with that, then basically that's all we need because you will find the equation looks very, very similar to the one we have. Be careful here is negative and minus, so it become plus here. M2, U2, and you just have to re rearrange it and then you can find the equation that we want to derive. So, yeah, I think, I think that's pretty much it. All right, so I guess to present it well, I will just write it again. Okay, and here we go. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the process of deriving this and appreciate how many basic fundamental uh, ideas that we have Newton's third law, second law, the idea of acceleration, putting all together to arrive this equation that is very useful. The other thing that I also want you to understand is that if you try to think about the assumption again, which is uh, there shouldn't be any external force involved in this motion, and that is if there is a case where you have other forces, then imagine this, you have a force, let's say like that's a friction or whatsoever, then you will need to add a force, let's say somewhere here, okay, or, or let's say it's negative, it doesn't really matter. But then eventually you find out this whole thing would kind of collapse because you find out it's not symmetrical anymore, right? Because this may be a friction and you, you can't be having F equal to MA and all these things uh, because this force probably is adding throughout the whole process. And so that is why we must fulfill the assumption that there's no external force whenever we use uh, the equation of conservation of momentum. In the next video, we'll try to do a 2D momentum question, which is not required in IGCSE or IB, but I find this is something that helps you understand uh, why momentum is a vector. So stay tuned for that, and I'll see you again in the next video. Bye.